name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, absolve your people from their offenses, that from the bonds of our sins, we might, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Isaiah chapter 65. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Epistles from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying there is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. For we are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For, for God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Oh. 
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us met and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I just had to walk up the stairs, <laughs> so I'm going to kind of catch my breath here. Uh, and while I'm doing that, here's the, uh, the text for us, Matthew chapter 25, the gospel lesson. And uh, I think for this sermon, we're going to call it by this title. Look further. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved in the Lord. There is a painting in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York called The Vision of St. John. Well-known painting painted by the 15th century artist El Greco. And the painting was actually an altarpiece where St. John is in the midst of these people who are getting white robes as depicted in Revelation. And John is looking up sort of with this ecstatic look in his face, this awe-filled look, looking up into the heavens where he sees Jesus, presumably. And I say presumably because this painting at the Met has actually been reduced. It's actually been cut. So that all you see, or I'll put it this way, all St. John sees in this painting, as he looks up ecstatically, is the frame of the painting. God is cut out. You don't see Jesus. Totally changes the painting. <laughs> and as I was thinking about that, I guess the, the thought that I want to share with you is our perspective matters, doesn't it? Where you're looking matters. Confined to this painting or beyond that into the heavens. Where we look matters. Perspective actually mattered for the virgins in the parable that Jesus tells. Jesus says that there were ten virgins and they were waiting for the bridegroom so that when the bridegroom came, they would enter in in a procession. They would celebrate the marriage. They'd enter the marriage feast together. Five of them, five of these virgins, really didn't look forward. They, they, just, they were focused on the here and now. And they only had enough oil for that present time. But the bridegroom was late for a reason only Jesus knows. This bridegroom took a long time to get there. So that when these virgins woke and the bridegroom is announced and on his way, they, find, they realize they don't have enough oil to go in with him to the wedding feast. And Jesus calls those five virgins foolish, right? The other five virgins took extra oil. They were looking down the line. Not knowing what was going to happen in the present, they, they had extra oil just in case for, for the future. So that when the bridegroom came, I mean, they fell asleep just like the others, but when they woke up, they had the oil that they needed to meet the bridegroom and to enter into this marriage feast and to celebrate and to have joy. And those virgins were called, help me out, wise. Last Sunday, 
we heard a very well-read sermon about the need or, or that we should prayerfully desire wisdom. And here in this parable, Jesus is inviting us to keep the watch for faith. And, and he, well, he basically said, this is what wisdom is, finally. To keep the watch of faith for Christ's return. That has absolutely everything to do with wisdom. And that's the perspective. Looking forward to Christ's return. Looking forward to the eternal wedding feast. That's where we look. Where we look right now, it, it, it matters. So I've got this rope. Sort of to illustrate the point. This is a rope. Let's just imagine that this rope goes on forever. It doesn't really. It just goes out to the, the, the narthex there. But let's just pretend this rope just keeps going on and on and on. And that rope represents your life. It just goes on and on and on forever. Now this part, I've got part of it in duct tape. Right here represents your birth. Right here at the end of the duct tape represents your death. This is your life in this world, right here. And then, eternity. Some of you, this is all you think about right here. So focused, not even just necessarily on this part. Maybe it's even a little, a little piece of it. Our whole life, we, I just can't wait to get a little bit old. I can't wait till I'm 16 and I can drive. Man, that's, that's, that's what life's going to be all about. I can't wait for that right person. That one person is going to change my life forever, and it's, it's going to be great. I can't wait to get out of college, out of, out of school, and get on with my life. We get focused on, uh, on uh, our, uh, getting ready for retirement, saving money. Because what we're after is if we can have enough money so that I can retire comfortably, you get the point, we fixate right here. I... I, I when are they going to get a, 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 what do you call it, a vaccine for the coronavirus? When are we going to be done with the coronavirus? Christians, people who confess the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, get so fixated here. I'll give you an example. Um, a well-meaning Christian, several years ago, I was talking with this person, and they were saying that um, another person shouldn't have a baby because there is that possibility, they were at an increased risk that that child would have a disability. So what they're saying is, because that child would have a disability and make this part difficult, don't have a child, which we know, though, resurrection, a glorified body, eternal. That changes the perspective. But here's the thing. Everything, the world, all around us is continually catechizing us to focus right here and to forget about, not to think about the fact that Christ is coming back. This world is coming to an end and Christ is going to usher in a new world where righteousness dwells forever. It's a long time. Where our perspective is, where we're looking, matters. It's 
this? What do we do? Where are we going to look? How does this work? Because if we're honest, can we all be honest? We're in church. We've all neglected our faith. There's been, well, we've all neglected our faith. So where are we going to look? Well, here's the good news. We look to Jesus. Because no, no matter how depleted our faith is, Jesus' grace can fill us to overflowing. He can fill our faith to overflowing with just one word. And sometimes just literally. Think about this. When, when uh, a, a leper came to Jesus and asked to be cleansed, literally with one word, Jesus cleansed him. He said, be clean. Pastor, that's two words. I know. In the Greek, it's one. <laughs> to a deaf man, he said to him, be open. His ears were open. To a dead man, Lazarus, he said, arise. And he stood up again and started talking to people, embracing his loved ones with one word. At Jesus' resurrection, or excuse me, at his crucifixion, when he accomplished the salvation of the world with one word, tetelestai, it is finished. Jesus opened up heaven to us forever, reconciled us to the Father, gave us eternal life, has given to us life, and has given us that life abundantly. He does these things with one word. And Jesus is just continually filling your ears with words. Today, you heard, forgiven, free. Your sins are not yours anymore. Life is yours. Hope is yours. With, with, with a word. So don't despair. Don't mourn the loss of the past. With a word. Jesus now opens to you eternity. He speaks and you get life that has no end. See, to look further, to look into eternity, actually doesn't mean to look out into this vast, empty space. To look at eternity actually simply means to look at the eternal God in flesh, Jesus. And you know what? He's not far off. Jesus is right here with us now. Heaven is open to you. Not someday. Now. Where we look matters. That's what we confessed in the creed. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. That's what this community of Christians do. By the way, that's why we say the creed over and over and over again. Because the creed, man, that's such a gift. Do you think about when, when, Because you have this creed in your mind and your heart, you've got a whole different worldview, a whole different perspective, a way of looking. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. That's where our gaze is. And so I just wonder, what, how could that change each day? What if this, what if we grew in this capacity every day in our agenda? Every day we got an agenda, right? Some of you write it down. What if first thing on your agenda, you wrote in on that day something wherein you are looking for the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting, or the world, the world to come. Could mean so you write in your planner um, six in the morning, or maybe at noon, you write in uh, read the Bible and prayer, Bible reading and prayer. 
or you in the evening you get rid of something else and you write in we're going to talk as a family and we're going to talk about what good things happened today and what bad things happened today and we're going to talk about how Jesus death and resurrection and the fact that he's coming again for us how does that change what happened today, especially if we're dealing with some sort of struggle, something bad happened. How does Jesus coming again and the resurrection of the dead, the world to come, how does that change today? And we can encourage one another with that. Maybe you have a meeting with, I don't know, one, two, three friends, and you get together, and you just you take time to encourage one another. Talk about your lives and encourage one another in Christ. Hold each other accountable, remembering that Christ is coming back. You guys are creative people. You could come up with a lot of different other, other ideas where you just, beginning of the day, I'm going to put in this one thing where I'm looking, for, hopefully more actually, but I'm going to put in this thing in my calendar where we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. I mean, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. And you who are looking in cyberspace, on the computer, come here. Because we, as a congregation, we've got a wonderful opportunity. We get to do this. World is really concerned about this right here. But we can do things differently. So we use... Our time, we, we make a schedule where we focus ourselves and we focus the world on what's to come, that Christ is coming back for us. We take a portion of our budget. We, 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 in the, the way we spend our money as a congregation, the resources that we have, we focus on the ministry of the Word that points us to Jesus. And this is what the, the world desperately needs this. The world is looking for a vaccine. The world is looking at who's going to be elected. The world is looking at a relief package for the coronavirus. We're not bound by that. And we look further. So that's the message for today. Your life is not bound by this. You are not defined by your decisions. You are not shackled to your sin. You are not stuck in your sickness. Your life is defined by Christ. Your life is filled with his word and what it accomplishes. We believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity and also true man born of the Virgin Mary is our Lord who has redeemed us, the lost and condemned person, purchased and won us from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Why? That we may live with him, be, that we may be his own and live with him in his kingdom. That's who we are. And we get to serve him in everlasting righteousness. Well, that's cool. Innocence. We're innocent. In blessedness forever. That's a long time. In Jesus' name, may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with thy whole church. Abide with us in the end of the day, in the end of our life, in the end of the world. Abide with us with thy grace and bounty, with thy holy word and sacrament, with thy comfort and thy blessing. Abide with us when over us comes the night of affliction and temptation, the night of fear and despair, the night of bitter death. Abide with us and with all thy faithful through time and eternity. We pray in this hour for all thy children. Grant that they may find the rest from all their labors and troubles. We pray for all who have tasted the abundance of thy goodness. Preserve their hearts from pride that they may give thee the glory. We pray for all whom thy hand has humbled, remembering especially Jeannie, Marvin, Leora, Nicholas, D, Viola, Andy, Gail, Rhonda, Linda, Ruth, the Morgan family, Grace, and Janelle. Lift them up with the word of thy love. We pray for all the members of our congregation, for the newborn children, for those whom the hand of death has touched. We pray for all expecting mothers, especially Robin and Dawn. Lead us through this earthly life to thine eternal kingdom. We pray for all who are dead to us, far and near. Unite us with them, O Lord, in thy care and thy peace. We pray for all who are hostile and estranged from us. Destroy all that divides us and grant us reconciliation and peace. We pray for all who are forsaken. Visit those that need thee and refresh them. Lord, we wait for thy day. Let its light shine upon us and wake us to the newness of life. You live and reign with the Father or with um, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And His mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent Your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank You that for His sake You have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask You not to forsake Your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by Your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.